Most of us are able to live our lives never in immediate paranormal danger, thank goodness. But if we subscribe to the SCP way of thinking, we can accredit that to the lovely foundation who secure, contain, and protect all sorts of unexplainable entities. As you probably already know, there are some nasty things out there that would love to see you hollowed out or crushed beneath their hooves, and it would be wonderful if they just stayed locked up forever. Lord have mercy if they ever escape. Hello horror heads and welcome back to the scariest channel on YouTube, Top 5 Scary Videos. I'm your horror host, Keegan Hughes, and we are back with a part 2 of the Top 5 SCP Monsters That Can Never Escape. I've done my very best to scour the SCP archives and come up with some of the less well known but equally dangerous creatures that would be better off behind bars. As per usual, make sure to give us a big thumbs up and subscribe if you want to see more SCP content. Let's get going. Number 5, SCP-2872. This SCP is usually an exceptional racehorse of excellent size and speed. Its record in the Kentucky Derby stands at 2 minutes 1 second, and it doesn't noticeably age. That aging thing aside, it doesn't usually exhibit any anomalous behavior. It just looks and acts like a regular racehorse. However, it must win the Kentucky Derby once every five years. If it does not find itself draped in roses within five years of winning its previous derby, it will become restless and start to run in large loops. Within two days, it will be continuously running, getting faster and faster and faster until it's able to demolish any wall or fence in its way. Somehow, it is never physically harmed by any of these impacts while in this state. If it's left unimpeded, it will reach a top velocity of approximately 320 meters per per second and will continuously run in loops across distances measuring hundreds of kilometers. This does not mean that it's unstoppable however. If it hears the words, whoa boy, it will stop over a period of 50 meters. However, the sound must be adjusted to take into account the Doppler effect before it will have the desired effect. The horse was discovered at some point in the 60s when it cost over 30 million dollars in damages. It was calmed down successfully by the owner at the time and custody of SCP-2872 was transferred to the foundation. The owner explained the five year principle and promptly skedaddled. He hasn't been seen since. Since then, the horse has hit what was assumed to be a top speed twice. However, the foundation found a private stable and trainer who seemed to be adept at keeping the horse sedate and winning derbies. At some point in the 2010s though, it began to show agitation again. Tranquilizers were ineffective and even the failsafe, whoa boy, did not work. SCP-2872 erupted from his cell, causing injuries and fatalities and ran off into the wastelands. At some point, it achieved a escape velocity and achieved liftoff. Yes, you heard me right. The horse ran so fast, defied gravity, right out into the solar system, out of our atmosphere and off into space. At this time, it is 10 light years away from our solar system and appears to have lost forward momentum. Current analysis suggests that it's turning back. Uh oh. When I said it can never escape, I actually meant it can never escape the cold, dark nothingness of outer space. but. Apparently it's just that fast. I don't think Earth is ready for that kind of impact. Coming in at number 4, SCP-1498. You might want to reconsider counting sheep before falling asleep after I tell you about this one. SCP-1498 is a collection of 30 autonomous bundles of phone cords and handsets assembled in such a way that they resemble sheep. These twirly corded creatures constantly wander around their containment chambers, ringing away every once in a while. If someone answers the phone or attempts to use the handset, they will hear three rings followed by a voice identifying themselves as an operator of the one I Roy collective. The operator will instruct the subject on various dreaming options and make suggestions for enhanced dreaming experiences. Once the call is ended, the subject will lose consciousness for 9 hours. That's more sleep than I've had all year, lucky bat. When they awake, the subject will claim to have experienced the exact dream they ordered. They will likely want to reuse the phone immediately. If someone uses this service repeatedly, the experience changes their bodily and mental state, and not for the better. They will want to sleep as often as possible and prefer to use the SCP to select their dreams. While they're sawing logs, parts of their skull will begin to be replaced by telephone parts. Sometimes this manifests through the coughing up of telephones, cords extending into their esophagus, wires growing in place of their hair, ringing devices being found in their ears, and their voices actually being replaced with dial tones. Doesn't sound like too much fun if you ask me. Imagine if these sheep were just 
out in the world, luring people in with a cure for insomnia and then replacing their body parts with phone pieces. I'm sure some folks would even do it voluntarily, knowing the risks. Eventually a whole rotary phone will assemble itself on the subject's head and then they will display the same intelligence as instances of SCP-1498. There have been no cases of human intelligence being restored in such cases. Hope the dreams were worth it. Coming in at number 3 we have SCP-4276. These next couple entries are particularly nasty insects who could very well be indistinguishable from their regularly occurring counterparts. Fair warning, you may never want to leave the house again. SCP-4276 is a tribe of insects similar to what is commonly known as the cuckoo wasp. They have many similarities including kleptoparasitic breeding habits and structural coloration. However, this SCP can manifest in many more colors and has been known to grow larger than the non anomalous variety. Its behavior is hard to distinguish from the average cuckoo wasp, save for an ability to grow to maturity much faster. Instead of hosting its larvae in eggs, SCP-4276 will introduce the baby bugs to both living and freshly killed animals. Yeesh. Recorded instances of this behavior have been found in 4 white-tailed deer, 2 desert cottontails, 1 red fox, 1 black bear, 1 german shepherd, and Get this, four human males. Yup, those nasty b****s will burrow into living humans. Is anyone else feeling itchy? The colony was originally discovered at the cottage of a hunter where wasps had infested the lodgings and burrowed into a man and three guests. Once they're ready to hatch, they burst forth from the flesh, leaving small holes all throughout the host. The colony was controlled with smoke and brought under the foundation's custody, thank goodness. While researching the behavior of these horrifying insects, it was discovered that hatching and maturation can be accelerated through the use of noises exceeding 90 decibels or irregular or extreme illumination, sometimes a combination of both. This became all the more horrifying when another instance was introduced at the local high school's prom. Loud music, flashing lights. You do the math. Foundation account details a student being so full of these rapidly growing wasps that he exploded. It's like becoming a human hive. Now we know there's more than one colony and they may not all be under Foundation custody. Excuse me as I go douse myself in gasoline. Coming in at number 2, SCP-775. If that last one gave you the heebie jeebies, prepare yourself cause this one isn't any better. 775 is a variety of tick significantly larger than most regular ticks. Most unengorged adults end up being around the size of a nickel. And if you've ever seen a normal tick, you should know that no tick should be that big. None. None of them. In addition to being huge, these ticks are resistant to crushing, cutting, and tearing. So anything you could do to kill a normal one won't be so effective here. Plus. They move fast. They're also capable of flattening themselves down to 25 millimeters to escape during tiny gaps and actually damaging concrete over time. These abilities would make any tiny blood sucker extra awful, but just you wait, it gets way worse. Blood isn't the only thing on the menu as these ticks inject an enzyme that liquefies other tissues. Bone, blood vessels, fats, all food for these buggers. The thing that they don't target is actually skin tissue. Once engorged with all of the host's gooey insides, it will lay an egg sac and resume feeding. And in fact, it will not stop feeding until the host is totally incapable of providing further nutrients. That means the hosts will be just hollowed out, leaving behind the outer layers of skin. Just imagine a totally deflated like human balloon and you'll start to get the picture. But the skin doesn't just get left alone, the ticks will actually get to work laying more eggs. And this loose skin will eventually be totally filled to the brim with eggs, taking on bloated and misshapen forms. Eventually, the ticks will fill these nests beyond capacity and they will burst like a greasy zit. The accelerated life cycle of these nasties mean that they can constantly undergo population explosions. If left unchecked, they could potentially decimate populations within weeks. Bleach seems to be the only way of effectively killing them. and that that's only when they're submerged for more than 5 minutes. The foundation really has their hands full containing these ones. And lastly, number 1, SCP-2316. Before you continue watching, please confirm that you do not recognize the bodies in the water. It is extremely important that you do not recognize the bodies in the water. This SCP is a cognito hazard, meaning that just knowing details about it can cause you to fall under its effect. Even though its escape is not likely to ever happen, knowledge most definitely will be shared at some point, like right now, and this compounds the danger. It manifests as a group of human corpses floating at the surface of the water in a lake. The lake has been quarantined and fenced off and is constantly patrolled by guards with no knowledge of this SCP. The identities of the bodies 
cannot be shared due to the risk of cognitive damage and the DNA tests have proven inconclusive. Remember, you do not recognize the bodies in the water. While they do appear as individual instances, it is theorized that the bodies may actually be an entity comprised of a collective consciousness. Those who have viewed it or are aware of its nature believe that the individual instances are human beings that they recognize, typically from their childhood. Attempting to come in contact with these instances will cause other bodies to appear. Additional instances serve to reinforce and add to the strength of the cognito hazard, which compels affected individuals into the water. Individuals who enter the lake this way are lost, and none of them have ever been recovered. No, they are not just going for a swim. One last time, you do not recognize the bodies in the water. Or do you? And there you have it, another five SCPs that can never escape. We should be safe, right? Let me know if there are any SCPs I overlooked down in the comments. Before we finish, let's take a look at some of the comments from our last video. Indiana Jones says, The bear is the most terrifying of all SCPs ever found. It is evil. Pure evil. You're damn right, Indy. You're damn right. Nocturna's Interfector says, An American guy on this channel? Interesting. Sorry to disappoint, but I'm actually Canadian. Maple syrup, hockey, moose, all that jazz. And with that, we'll finish up. Make sure to fire a like and subscribe for more scary videos. Until next time, thanks for watching.